In this video, I'm going to show you how to balance anamorphic setups on the Zion Crane 2. Uh, specifically, we're going to be using the Schneider 2X XL anamorphic single focus uh, kit that I build. It's the heaviest single focus anamorphic kit that I build. It's the, the highest quality, but all this front heavy weight here can make it challenging to balance on a gimbal even as robust as the Zion Crane 2. So we're going to start here and hopefully the tips and tricks in this video will show you how to mount lighter single focus anamorphic kits as well. Uh, so as you can see, this setup is perfectly balanced. You want to balance this perfectly uh, before turning the motors on because that's the easiest way to make sure you get the smoothest look with the gimbal. If it's not perfectly balanced before you activate the motors, then you might get nodding or it might, it just won't be smooth. It'll be very difficult to operate. So just to run through the rig right here, this is a GH5. Uh, this is a M42 to Micro Four Thirds adapter. A Helios 58mm f2 prime lens and a Schneider XL single focus anamorphic kit. So let's get started. So we're going to start by attaching the base plate to the camera. Because we know we're going to have so much forward weight, we're going to want to bring this as far back as we can. Uh, one thing to keep in mind every time you attach uh, the Zion Crane to any, any camera is that make sure that you have your lens cap off and if you have an articulating screen, making make sure that it's in the position that you want it to be. Otherwise, you'll set up your balance and then you'll forget that you actually want to shoot with your articulating screen out and your lens cap off and you'll have to make tweaks to the balance. So make sure that that's all set up and just go ahead and attach this and then you can use the lens support. Make sure that is, is set and ready to go. Okay, now I've brought my crane in. What I'm going to do is put the camera on. I'm not going to adjust this axis right now. I actually want it to be a little forward, even if it is imbalanced. So obviously that, that's not going to work uh, because we want to balance the other axes first. It's actually a lot easier to do it this way. So we can balance this axis right here. This is, base, this is your Y axis. And what we're going to do is just make sure that this is balanced as we need to. We might have to change this if we have to add back weight, but we'll just start. Kind of get a sense where that is. And then now we're going to also adjust Okay, so seems like it's okay there. It's okay here. Maybe a little lower. Okay, and then we'll try to balance. We'll see if we can do it. I know we can't, but just for demonstration purposes, bring the Z axis as far back as you can. We still, we still can't get a balance. So this is where one of the tricks comes in. Uh, the Crane 2 actually includes, I'm gonna lock it here. The Crane 2 actually includes uh, some screw threads right here and right here. These are just quarter 20 screw threads. And the trick is to take some weight, add some weight there, and that gives you more back weight to be able to balance a heavy front setup. So what I have here are just some, some weights. These are just some typical weights that you might find on a Steadicam. Uh, these are pretty inexpensive. I take a quarter 20 screw here, and what I want to do is just add a bunch of weight to the back here. And this will allow me, this, I'll have to adjust my axis, but you don't know how much weight you need until you've gone through this trial and error process. And I know I need about, about this is about a pound of weight on the back here. So you just want to attach this, make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want this shifting. And we're going to rebalance. I have to push this forward. As you can see now, our weight has dramatically changed. So we'll want to make sure we pull up on that. And of course, our x-axis has also changed, our x-balance. And then now we can adjust our Z. Okay, so that's good. We just need a few tweaks. That 
that's good there. So it looks like we're pretty set. Uh, when we get a, a perfect balance, you should be able to rotate the camera. It should not have any uh, wobble or anything. You should be good to go. Uh, again, we have articulating screen in place. We have our our, uh, our, our lens cap off and even make sure that you have your battery in your camera. Sometimes you'll balance your camera. You'll forget that you don't have a battery in there because you removed it for charging. And then when you put the battery in that adjusts your weight as well. So again, uh, just make sure that if you can't get a full forward balance, you just need to add some weight to the back here. You can either add it in two places. So you can add as little or as many as you need. Uh, if you have less forward weight, then you will need less rear weight counterbalance. So. It essentially serves the same purpose as it does in a steady cam, just making sure that your weight is counterbalanced somewhere. So uh, just make sure you have these if you have a front heavy setup and now we'll turn the crane on and uh, see how it uh, performs. So as you can see, when you first turn the crane on, it goes into uh, the PF mode. One thing that you'll notice is that the camera will have this nodding to it. This is because your setup is overall quite heavy and the motors cannot compensate quickly. So what you wanna do is just double tap the mode button and put it in follow mode. And when you have it in follow mode, the motor settings are much higher. So you're able to have a perfect balance with a pretty heavy lens setup, which is uh, pretty impressive for basically what is a handheld tool that you can uh, basically put in a backpack and use. So uh, I'll put this on the, the uh, tripod so you can see a better a, a better balance, better shot of this balance, but it is really impressive that you can uh, balance such a heavy front heavy setup on this on this basically backpack tool and get really really smooth shots with an anamorphic lens. Now that we're in follow mode here we uh, can perfectly use the Zion crane without any issues, without any nodding. So if you do want to use pan follow mode but you have issues with your setup nodding you can also change the strength of your motors by pressing and holding the menu button. Scroll over to motors, and then you have three settings. Uh, high uses the most battery, but if you want to use pan follow, then it's just a compromise you'll have to use. So just select high, and then exit your menu. You have to re-engage the motors by pressing and holding mode, and you no longer have nodding, and you are in pan follow mode. So now that we're in follow mode, we get a nice smooth operation with the crane too. This is very impressive given that this is a, a backpack tool and that you can balance a single focus anamorphic on your DSLR camera and essentially uh, fit all of this into a backpack and get a very, very impressive, uh, you know, super smooth anamorphic cinematic look uh, out of just uh, a tool this small. And as this is the heaviest kit that we build, if you want to use a lighter setup, we do build smaller and more compact single focus anamorphic kits. Uh, in that scenario, you would just remove some of these back weights and you'd be good to go. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to be doing more of the Zion Crane 2 anamorphic tutorials in the future and hope this helps you get your setup up and running.